We just have to, in simply faith, simple faith, just to trust God in this time. We are looking at our overarching theme, Jesus, the answer to human dilemma. And at this time, I'm going to invite Minister Melen Mel Hamilton. She's going to be speaking to us. She's going to be bringing the word to us. And I notice her sub theme is go again. I am very interested to hear this. And so I want you to open your hearts, open your ears, put your microphone on mute as we listen to the woman of God, as she bring forth the word that God has given to her for this time and this season. God bless you, Minister Mel. If you would just unmute your phone and give the word that is on your heart for God's people. I'd like to take this opportunity to just greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus, to acknowledge first Senior Pastor Cleveland Perkins and Co-Pastor Pasida Perkins, my family and friends and everyone from House of Bread. I'd like to just greet you in the name of Jesus. Um, I'm not going to say that um, I'm not nervous and you're going to hear that in my voice very clearly. Um, but I want to just go straight into the word. So if you could go with me to St. John's 21, verse 1 through to 7. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, Galilee. And he did it in the way. Simon Peter and Thomas, who is called Did Didymus, the twin, and Nathaniel from Cana, of Galilee as well as John and James the sons of Zebedee and two others of his disciples were together Simon Peter said to them I'm going fishing they said and we are coming with you so they went out and got into the boat and that night they caught nothing as morning was breaking Jesus came and stood on the beach however the disciples did not know that it was Jesus so Jesus said to them, children, do you have any fish to eat along with your bread? They answered, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right hand side of the boat, starboard, and you will find some. So they cast the net and then they were, they were not able to haul in it because of the great catch of fish. Then that disciple, John, whom Jesus loved, esteemed, said to Peter, it is the Lord. Mm -hmm. When I began to prepare the word, because um, we were given different topics and themes that we could speak about, and I went in and I thought this was actually an easy deal um, in the sense of catching fish and fishes of men, and so forth. But as I went further and I completed my exegesis on these verses, the Lord started to deal with my heart and he said, do not look at it independent of itself, but have a look further. As much as this is written in John, it's actually about Peter. And so I'm going to focus on Peter and then I will come back and break this word. Peter, known first to us as Simon, which I looked up, Hera, is a fisherman. This is his profession and trade. His first encounter met him also at the place of his profession. Jesus was by the Sea of Galilee and he needed a boat. Peter had already done his fishing and was cleaning the nets alongside some others. So to speak to the multitude, Jesus asked him, could you take me out a little way on the land, from the land? So on the boat at the time was his brother, Andrew, and on another boat was James and John, which are the sons of Zebedee. They were also fishermen and also very 
close friends. This showed me that there is power in our workplaces, that God will meet us in our place of work. But I also started to think about many of us are not at work due to the situation that we're in at the moment. And again, that told me that God can meet us at anywhere. Now, I want to go into that scripture that talks about where he is. And I'm going to take my time to bring this forward. It's based on Luke 5, 1 through to 11. But I'm not going to read all the verses. I am going to paraphrase. So Jesus is by the river of the lake. And he decides to go out onto the lake because the multitude on the land is great. And for him to be heard, he needs to go away from the crowd. I believe that's what's happened to some of us today. And while they're out on the boat, Jesus speaks, does what needs to be done. But then also now gives a command, which I believe he's saying to many of us in this situation, take me out deeper. Let us go out a little further. And it's when Peter goes out further that he drops his net and there is a miracle and his first encounter really of who Jesus is. In the scripture, it tells me that when he drops the net and when they had done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes to the degree that their nets began to break. He had to bid over to James and John for them to come alongside the boat so that the whole of fish could be added also onto them. I got so excited in my spirit because at that point I realized that God is calling us out deeper. He's calling us out from the banks of the river. He's telling us to go deeper listen to my instruction, and then the yield will be far greater than we can ever expect. There, when they were there, he said to them, and Jesus said unto Simon, fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all that they had, so that's their profession, everything they were accustomed to, their livelihood, left their home and followed Jesus. We go on to understand that Peter became one of the inner circle friends of Jesus. I kind of like that because there wasn't really nothing about Peter that should have given him that kind of access, but that's the God that we serve. He was passionate. I'm known to be passionate, sometimes misunderstood for that also. He also ended up being the same disciple that denied Jesus three times. Now, some of us might be wondering, how on earth does that happen? No way. He knows that Jesus can catch a multitude of fish. He followed Jesus for three years. He was learning and seeing all the things that God can do. But yet he was the disciple, disciple that denied Christ three times. And these words were spoken to him also. Get thee behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of man. Oh, my days. Really? To Peter, one of the disciples from the inner circle? Please stay with me. You'll soon understand where I'm going with this. Peter's characteristics becomes essentially prominent at the, last, at the Last Supper. He was earnest, busy doing what he thought he needed to do. And he was asking questions. I did find that quite funny because he really wanted to know who the traitor was going to be. Can you imagine there's 12 of you and one of you know that you're going to be the one that gives up Christ. And this particular passionate one wanted to find out who it was. But that same passion that he had for Christ was the same thing that was going to be his failing. But what I also love about Peter, that even though he denied Christ, my God, he did not stay in that position. 
he went again. Jesus goes again to Peter. He really is the God of a second chance. God has not forgotten you. He cares about you. Now I've arrived at the scripture of today, and I want to explain to you where it falls in context. Right now, what has happened, Jesus has already died. He's rose from the dead, but he has not yet ascended. And many of you will know that he goes about visiting and he goes about doing various acts of affirming to those that were following him who he is and the command of what needs to be done now that he was about to leave. Now I've come to this scripture, 21, 1 to 7. I don't know what provoked Peter after following Christ for three plus years and leaving his profession to decide to go back and fish. While I was researching this, I saw different people give different reasons. Some said that he was discouraged and went back to what he knew. Some said that because um, he didn't feel that he had the same conviction and power, that's why he went. But I looked in my Bible and I didn't see that. It didn't tell me that. All I knew, he said, let's go and fish. This is the second time I'm hearing, let's go again. So he, go, he says it to his comrades and the comrades that are with him again triggered my thoughts because some of these individuals were with him on the first expedition and he turned to them and he said, let's go and fish. And oh my days, didn't the same thing happen again? He toiled all night and guess what? He caught Dada, no fish. Now, to some people that wouldn't mean anything, but to a fisherman who's probably gone out because he's hungry, needs to catch fish. The Lord leaves him out there doing that which he's accustomed to doing. And while he's out there fishing and catching no fish, I don't know what you call it, drop net, catch no fish, I don't know what you call it. But regardless of not catching fish, he's still a fisherman. And at this point, Jesus comes at daybreak and this caught my spirit and what I loved was that Peter now had learnt when Jesus asked him <laughs> what have you caught he answered not a long sentence which he was accustomed to doing or a big explanation then he was said, did you catch anything? He gave him a two letter word, no. <laughs> I don't know if it was because he was deflated, I don't know. But he just responded, no. But what I love about Peter, even though he didn't know it was Jesus speaking to him, he waited and Jesus responded to him and said to him, go cast the net, on the right hand side of the boat and you will find some now go with me those who know me know how i think logically now it's the river there isn't a wall in the river there isn't different currents flowing in the river so that there should be a different catch on the left hand side to the right hand side but what I've come to understand, and this is what, and I'm praying that I don't get emotional at this time, but this is what caught me. God is going to ask us to do some ridiculous things that may not make sense to anybody else. But a scripture that I live by, that obedience is better than sacrifice. Now, I know that Peter would have been tired because he said he toiled all night and caught nothing. And all of a sudden, a stranger said to him, cast your net on the other side. I'm telling you again, Peter was a fisherman. It was his profession. He would have known what to do to catch fish. But yet, in obedience to the sound, in obedience to the command, he took his net and went on the other side. And this time there was not another boat. He would have to catch a hold of the multitude of fish that now had come 
into his net in the daybreak. When I started to read that, the scripture came to me, weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming. Our breakthrough is going to come in the morning. Because of obedience, because we are willing to tarry through the night, our breakthrough will come if we will go again. When he now had this great catch alongside him, was his friend and his sojourner, John himself. John discerned that it was Jesus. I want to give God thanks for my friends that I have alongside me that will discern when I am doing right and when I'm doing wrong and will have the right to speak to me and I am humble enough to hear it. But this is what I loved about John and you guys have to read it and read it in different versions. When he realized that he was Jesus, he wasn't dressed appropriately. Some of them actually said he was naked. He dived off the boat and swam to shore. I believe that many of us, when we hear and understand and discern that Jesus is in the center of this shutting or lockdown, whatever you want to call it, when you discern it, you will just decide to take off everything that you have on. Everything that you have on. One second, one second. Everything that you have on. And you will move into a position that won't make sense. You'll actually come out of your safety, your profession, the things that want to hold you, the things that want to tie you down, the things that want to trap you. I want you to understand that the enemy wants to put you in a position to tell you that this is not of God. Let me tell you, even if the enemy has sent this, the Lord is able to turn the circumstances around for our good. And I believe that the saints of God should be praising God just for that. I want you to also understand when Peter, my God, this is where he brought me to. There are some things that we will do again. Now listen to me. He went to the other side and still was doing the same thing, but he changed position in obedience. Some of us will remain doing the same things, but please saints of God, let us do it in accordance to the voice of God. There is something that is unique that comes when we move in the favor of God. All our fears go, all our anxieties go, because he then is in it, my God. I want you to go on to where the conclusion is, and this is what I love about my Jesus. When we look at the conclusion of that same scripture and you go to the end, I'm not going to pay any mind to what the enemy's doing. My notes are not here and I'm just going to pray, preach from my spirit. What God did is sat him down over food. I like that, over food. And as he ministered to him, he asked him the question, Peter, do you love me? Peter answered him quite quickly, yes, Jesus, I love you. He asked him a second time, Peter, do you love me? And Peter answered, yes, I do. The third time, Peter's like thinking, seriously, can you not hear me? But I love it. And he didn't catch this revelation, but I got it. Three times he asked him, oh, do you love me? And Peter answered, Jesus, yes, I do. Three times Peter denied him. And three times Peter owned him. Three times Jesus validated him. I believe that God has taken many of us away so that we can be restored back to the place that we have moved away from so that our lives can be validated. So when we come out of this shutdown, shut in, lockdown, whatever you want to call it, we're going to come out validated. Why do I say that? Because Peter preached at Pentecost. And when he preached, 3,000 souls were saved. You better go again. You better get ready. You better go again. Whatever God is saying to you, he's about to validate you and you're about to do greater than when you went in to this shutting.
go again in Jesus' name. Pastor Pesida. Bless Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. Go again. Amen. Go again. I am blessed by this word. And this word is telling me that I must be obedient. I must obey what God is telling me to do. Even if it's ridiculous to the flesh. God bless you, Minister Mel. And I hope that we take from this that even though Peter denied Christ three times, Jesus validated him. Jesus loved him. Jesus is the answer to man's dilemma. Bless the name of the Lord. I'm going to ask. Thank you, Minister Mel. May God richly bless you and keep you that as you give yourself to the word of God and in the presence of God, that you will continue to catch fish, that you will cast your net where he tells you to, and that your net will be overflowing with precious souls. God bless you. At this time, I'm going to ask Minister Lanry Coke to just pray a, a, a closing prayer. And I must say that if you are touched by this service, you are ministered to, you can put a message in the chat. You can call the office. The, the, the number is up 02077. 324970. We are able to pray with you, to talk with you. God loves you, and Jesus is the answer. So please make contact with us. We have people here who are willing and able and waiting to minister to you. I'm going to ask Minister Lanrico to pray this closing prayer at this time. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this time of fellowship. Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said, my sheep hears my voice. Bless the Lord. So in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command every deaf ears to be open to the voice of the Holy Spirit of God. Every deaf ears be open now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God. Let the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead, who dwells inside of us, manifest in power and in glory in every one of our lives right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God. Father, align every one of us to your agenda, to your timeline, and to your calendar, Almighty God. Align us, Almighty God, so we can go again in the power of your Holy Spirit, the authority of your word, and the lordship of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God. Lord, perform the counsel of your messengers. Confirm the word of your servant to the Almighty God. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord. I declare everyone here is blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus.